Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by prepping my practice hand. This is the Vita Bella practice hand. If you guys are new to my channel, this is my very own silicone practice hand. We recently launched, so if you guys are interested, I will leave it linked in the description box. But I'm just taking my cuticle pusher and going up underneath. I do have an easy prep system on my website, so if you guys are interested in learning how I do that, make sure you guys check out that video as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly pop off those nails, and then you're gonna see how easy I prep for my next set. So I'm taking the easy tape from our website and I'm just applying a small amount on the nail bed of the practice hand cutting off the excess and I want to make sure that I'm pressing it firmly down so that it all the way adheres on all of the areas of the nail and we're going to be removing that white paper backing to the tape and then that is how we are going to adhere our next tip so these tips are also linked on my website. We made this practice hand very easy to use with our easy prep method. So we're gonna be taking the tip and inserting it backwards. So the coffin side in towards the nail pocket. And then you just see how easily I just press that down and then you are ready to work on your practice hand. It makes it a very easy process so that way you don't have to soak off every time and you're not damaging your practice hand. These are an investment, so you wanna make sure you're taking care of them. So we figured we would come up with a solution to minimize ruining your practice hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish prepping that. We're going to be going in with some nail tips that I purchased off of Amazon. These have been my most recent go-to tips. They are non-C-curve, but they are squared in the perfect square shape. So I'm going to be applying these using my Young Nails Brush on Glue. It is my go-to glue. I'm just adding a little bit at the free edge, placing it on the nail, and you can see how easily they adhere. The shape is absolutely perfect, and it's not C-curved. A lot of people struggle with applying acrylic on C-curved tips, so this is your solution. I'm just taking my nail tip cutters and trimming off a little bit of that tip. We are gonna be leaving these long. So now I'm gonna be going in with my acrylic application for this beautiful powder. I did actually recently show you guys how I mixed it in one of my other videos and I'll leave that linked if you guys are wanting to check it out. But it is actually the set that you saw in the beginning of the video where I was taking off those tips. It is the same nude color that I used on that video, but I took a little bit of Silk Scarf from Not Polish and Nude Panther from Not Polish as well, mixed them until I got this really pretty nude color that goes perfectly with this skin tone of my practice hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my acrylic. I'm just doing basic acrylic application using my Profiles Backstage Acrylic Brush. And I'm just going to be applying that starting from the tip up towards the cuticle area. I do use multiple beads instead of just one. I prefer that method. I feel like you're able to build up the apex nice and thick while also keeping the tip of the nail nice and thin. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to apply that on the nail. And now for reference, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Monomer. I'm taking a medium sized bead of acrylic, applying that in the middle section of that tip and I quickly start working with the product, making sure that I continue to move it in towards the center of the tip and while also just tucking in those sides to make sure that it doesn't overflow and we're keeping the shape nice and tight. All I'm doing is using a very light tapping motion while holding the finger downward. The product is going to naturally flow downward so your goal is to just kind of try to keep it in the center of the nail. And I just use very, very light tapping motions to kind of move it to the area that I want it to go. You can see how effortlessly I'm applying it. So as long as you have your liquid to powder ratio down perfectly, you should be good to go. It's just a matter of using the right products and having the perfect liquid to powder ratio. So if you're struggling with your acrylic application, make sure you guys go back to my beginner basics playlist. I go fully in depth and I try to explain everything very, very thoroughly so that you guys can get better grasp of how to use the powder and liquid together. And that should help you guys so, so much. So make sure you guys check those videos out if you guys are new and struggling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to lay my acrylic. 
and I'll let you guys watch the rest of the process. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm taking this safety bit from Not Polish. I didn't even know this bit existed until I found it in my stash the other day, so I figured I would give it a go, and I am obsessed. So this one is a thicker uh, width, but I don't mind it at all whatsoever. It has a nice safety bit at the top, so you don't have to worry about cutting or nicking your client at all. It will not hurt the client. It's nice and fine, so it makes the final filing process just super super smooth so i'm just going around that cuticle area very lightly and then going vertically up and down the entire surface of the nail my goal here is just to try to smooth out any little area that i may have kind of built up a little bit higher than the rest of the nail i try to lay my acrylic as neat as possible so this process is very minimal i'm going to be going in with my hand file this is my favorite hand file from tammy taylor it is her peel and stick file I am using the 100 grit. That is my preference. They also have a more fine grit as well if you guys want to try that one instead. But I like this one. It's perfect for shaping and filing the surface as well. So I'm just going on the sides, making sure that the shape is nice and crisp. And then we're going to be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. And I'm going to be squaring off that tip. That is my preference of how I file the tip. I find it a lot easier and I'm able to see any imperfections that I may have missed from looking at the nails from my view. Now since we are going to be doing tons of painted nail art, I'm going to go ahead and take my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and we're just going to very gently buff the surface of the nail, make sure that everything is nice and smooth so that you can go in with your nail art effortlessly. 
going in with the Kiara Sky Lint Free Wipes and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. I'm going to go ahead and clean the surface of the nail along with the practice hand just to make sure that I remove the majority of that dust. Now we're going to go in directly with our nail art. I'm going to be using all of the frosting gel paints in the Neon Collection from Profiles Backstage. These are my favorite gel paints by far. I've tried tons of them and I just keep gravitating towards these. They have a very, very opaque finish. They don't have a tacky layer. They're just nice and thick and creamy, which is my preference when it comes to gel paints. Now, if you guys want them to be more runny, by all means, try their gel art liners. Those are going to be very, very opaque as well, but definitely more on the runny side. I prefer it to stay nice and put whenever I place it on the nail. So again, if you guys want something a little bit more runny, I would definitely recommend the liners instead. So I'm going to be taking the neon pink, neon purple, neon blue, neon green, neon yellow, and neon orange. And then we're going to be adding in some white and black as well. Again, all from the frosting gel paints from Profiles Backstage. Now, as far as my nail art brushes go for this video, I accidentally left all of my brushes at home. So if you guys do not know, I do do classes in person. We've been traveling all over the place and offering those. So I just got back from LA and I want to give a quick shout out to all of my girls that attended that class. It was absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to see everyone grow, but I have yet to bring back my stuff from my house. So we're working with what I have here at the salon, which I am using the nail art brush from a cart. They are my favorite ones. This one is just a little bit on the thicker side than the one that I usually use, but same difference they work very very well the bristles are absolutely amazing so i'm not even going to complain i'm just glad that i actually had one here available for me to use so i'm going to go in we did the little flower up top and i'm actually flash curing with this light from profiles backstage if you guys don't have one of these little lights definitely recommend it obviously you can find different ones from different brands but I think this one is super super cute so because my practice hand is like nice and stable on my desk i don't like moving it while i'm doing nail art so i'm just taking that to quickly flash cure it so that i'm able to go ahead and paint the rest of the design without having to move it readjust the fingers every single time into my big light so i'm just using this to my advantage because i do have to cure in between every single color I want to make sure that I'm not taking it all the way out and putting it in the light and having to fix everything all over again. So just a quick little fix. Obviously, if you're working on a client, it is a little bit easier because you're able to work on one hand, place it in the light and then work on the other hand. And their fingers aren't, you know, as uh, complicated to kind of move around. I just don't like overly bending my fingers of my practice hand because they are delicate. So I want to make sure that I keep the integrity of them nice and perfect. So we're just doing kind of like a rainbow swirl down the nail. So I'm just taking all the different colors and kind of layering them one after another to create that really pretty simple swirl effect. Now I did like ramble quite a bit here, but I wanted to give a good shout out to the original artist of this design. The artist that I'm talking about is named Beverly Salas on Instagram. So make sure you guys go check them out. Absolutely amazing. I took bits and pieces from different art pieces that I saw on the Instagram page, and then I incorporated it throughout this entire set. So the index finger was from one piece and then the middle finger from a different kind of all like that. I just incorporated them all into this set and I'll insert photos of the pictures that I got the inspo off of. But giving credit where it is due is absolutely needed. So make sure you guys check them out if you guys love this type of vibe when it comes to art. Also, if you guys have an artist that you guys are obsessed with and want to share it with me so maybe I can recreate some of their work, comment down below in the comment section. Let me know their Instagram page, Pinterest, wherever they're at on social media so that I can try to recreate more nail art inspired by their art. So let me know down below. But We're going to go ahead and draw a mushroom on the pinky. 
and I'm just basically going in little layer by layer. You can always add your own twist to it. I try to simplify the process, but sometimes as I'm doing it, I realize that I could have done different little areas to make my life a little bit easier. For example, I could have done the head of the mushroom first and then done the stem versus trying to go in around the tip of the stem. So if that makes sense, try to kind of break it down into little pieces in your head and that way you can transfer it onto the nail a little bit easier. Uh, so I've been trying to do that but sometimes I just get way too into it and then I don't realize what I'm doing and how I could have made it a little bit easier for me. So we're just going to be doing the head. I also remember that we're going to be curing in between each layer that we need to. I'm basically doing it after every single color that I'm doing. Uh, stabilizing my finger, stabilizing my hand with my pinky is always a must as well. And I try to move the finger in a better position that will help me as well try to reach little difficult areas versus trying to move my body into an uncomfortable position. So make sure you guys do that as well. We're going to be adding a small portion of a flower on the left side of that mushroom. I'm going to be using the neon yellow color and then I added a little bit of orange in there and then we're going to be going in with kind of a triangle shaped design on the bottom of the nail. That was something that I kind of just incorporated to tie in the neon rainbow vibes from the index finger and I'm going to be incorporating that on the bottom portion of that mushroom. I'm going to be going in with my first color, which is the purple, and then I'm actually going to be going on the entire opposite side to create that like initial triangle shape. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have the perfect amount of colors to then go right down the middle with the third color and then go in between the first and second line with the second color and etc. So you guys will kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to make my life a little bit easier so that everything is nice and centered. So yes, I am also using the exact same brush throughout the entire set. It does not necessarily take me longer because I have to clean off the color to dip into to the next color all i simply do is take my brush and place it in between a paper towel fold it over and squeeze the color out and then of course just wipe it until it is fully clean a lot of you guys have asked if i do use product to clean my brushes and honestly no like even when i'm using black and then i need to go back into white i just give it a few more wipes than i typically would and because the bristles are so tiny and thin you should be able to really easily remove all that color from the bristles so just keep that in mind to be able to keep the integrity of your bristles a lot longer. I've kept nail brushes like over five years. So from my experience, this works perfectly. Now we're going to be moving on to the middle finger. We're going to be doing a beautiful eyeball. So I'm just starting off with the top portion, adding the pupil, and then we're going to be adding some fun neon colors for the actual color part of the eye. And then of course adding in some eyelashes and all those cute little details but i'm gonna let you guys continue watching this again just cleaning my brush in between colors and curing every color in between so that none of it mixes together you want to make sure you are curing each layer of color
Now we're going to be adding a little bit of shading, kind of give it a little eyeshadow type of vibe. I am going off of that original art piece and it's like a peachy bright color. So what I did was took my neon orange paint with a little bit of white, mixed it on my thumb as you can see. And I'm using the smallest amount to go around that eye. And then I'm taking a dry brush of your choice. I'm using a gel brush. And I'm just going to be taking that to kind of blend it out a little bit and make it uh, seem a little bit more blended, obviously. So I'm just adding a line underneath the eye as well. And then, like I said, I'm just going to be taking that dry brush and wiping it up at the top to blend it out. And then down at the bottom to blend that out as well. Now we're just quickly finishing up some of the last little details in black and then we're going to be adding some of that blue color to create a little tear effect on the bottom of the eye. I'm starting off with a long drip, bringing it up towards the eyeball and then bringing down some tiny drips as well. Now for the ring finger, I wanted to incorporate some of that black and white design that the artist creates a ton of. So I went ahead and just started off with a white swirled line. And then I'm going to be going based off of that first initial line and adding some black in there and then a little bit more white as well. And then we're actually going to be going in with some more colorful petals just to accent it and tie it all together. I always try to incorporate some of the colors throughout the entire set just so that it doesn't look completely off. For example, if I would have done this nail completely black and white, it would have kind of thrown everything off. So in order to offset that and make everything nice and cohesive, we're going to be adding some of that neon color back into that nail.
once I finished the last details on that nail, I went ahead and placed it in my Kiara Sky LED light for a full minute. I want to make sure that even though I was curing in between layers, I am fully curing that. These are very opaque and thick paints. So if you do not cure it thoroughly, you will have some chipping. So make sure that you go ahead and place it in your big lamp for a full 60 seconds. Now once we are out of the light, I'm going to go in with my top coat. This is matte it from Not Polish. You guys already know that with my hand painted nail art, I just cannot stay away from matte top coat. So I apologize if you guys wanted to see shiny. But we're going to go ahead and place that in the light once again. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget the ones I made.